Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, got a little bit of a pullback, and that is what is going on with the market, and I think I have a small idea about what is going on, and we'll get to that in just a second. Also, this is one of the scariest articles I've read in quite some time. Paytm freezes Indian bank accounts suspected of cryptocurrency trading. And this is just one example. Uh, there's a couple of examples here that make me really wonder what is going on in India. Because not too long ago, the Supreme Court of India declared cryptocurrency legal. So what is going on with the banks? And smart money grayscale. XRP is poised to benefit from the $2 trillion global payments market. And the question I have is, why this and why now? And that'll lead us to a question of the day. And we'll go over that at the very end, but let's break into what's going on with the market. So first up, uh, I think we all knew this was coming, and here we are. So uh, it is August 11th. It's about 3 p.m. Texas time, and it looks like uh, Bitcoin had a little bit of a pullback, uh, dropping 4.8%. So if you are in the traditional world and just came over to cryptocurrency, uh, welcome. Uh, some may say this is a very scary day in the traditional world. Uh, we just call this a Tuesday, so not a big deal. Ethereum, down almost 5%, XRP. I mean, everything across the board is down, down, down. Now, there's some that have taken quite a tumble. 8% uh, for Bitcoin SV, 7.8% uh, for EOS, and what else? Uh, pretty big. Monero took a big dump. Well, I'm sorry, not a big dump. A uh, little pullback, as I like to say. 7.27, Cosmos 8.3, after being up majorly. And uh, that is just how the market goes. 8.9% for Dash. So yeah, that is uh, that is bound to happen. And these are the days, you know, like like I, I talked about in yesterday's video, uh, last week was fantastic, right? The highs. And I could feel that FOMO coming in for everybody who had all these comments like, this is it. This is the beginning of the parabolic bull run. This is the big bull run. This is going to happen. This, 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 this. I'm like, just wait, just wait. And I hate to be the wet blanket, uh, but that is uh, who I am. Uh, I've been around this this game for a little bit of time, and this isn't my first rodeo, and I think this isn't yours either, but you have to stem the exuberance of all the people that are coming in that have not really experienced this. So uh, this is just another pullback, and uh, it's not a big deal. And this goes, and well, this brings me to my next point, which was just three days ago, uh, I had talked about, hey, you know, uh, when Chainlink was was pumping massively and it, had, it hit the sixth spot, I said, hey, I've been talking about this project for months and months now, over five months, and I've told you it was gonna do well, and it's gonna do well, and, and here we are. But the thing was, I made mention of, uh, as far as cryptocurrency, the first rule of crypto and digital assets is we do not FOMO. The second rule of crypto digital assets is we do not FOMO. And uh, people are like, you're crazy, old man. You don't know what you're talking about. It's, it's going to go up to the moon. It's going to be fantastic. Chainlink's going to go up to $20. Da, da, da. I'm like, maybe. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I could be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. Ask my wife. But uh, I mean, I've seen this, this game and I see what's going on. So I said, do not FOMO in. Do not FOMO. Trust me. And uh, some people listened, some people didn't. And uh, I'm not Nostradamus, I just thought it would. Now, I could have been totally wrong. I mean, Chainlink could have been, you know, gone up to 20, 30, 50 bucks. I mean, it could have. But uh, in my opinion, I'm just like, just stick to your plan. Whatever your plan is, I don't think your plan is to, um, you know, find out when the exact moment when the parabolic bull run is going to happen and dump in your 500 uh, ten thousand, hundred thousand dollars into one project and just right at the top and then get out the very top. That is crazy town. That will never happen. I'm just here to break it to you. Uh, it's very hard to do that. I, I don't know if anybody has done that. So uh, don't even try it. So what I always say is just dollar cost average. So like uh, this week, as a matter of fact, coincidentally, uh, today was a day uh, when I buy my chain link and it comes out automatically on the Voyager app. And I also have some other cryptocurrencies that I buy on uh, Gemini. So uh, I'm, I'm not saying don't buy these things. I'm just saying don't go all in because I think a lot of people went all in a couple of days ago. And they're like, nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch it. And now they're sitting there and they're like, shoot, 8% down, 6% down, 10% down or whatever else it is. And I know you're, what you're going through because I went through the exact same thing. There's that that uh, feeling that in the pit of your stomach. If you did that, it's okay. Learn from that. Move on. It's going to be fine. Uh, like I like I talked about, um, if you you're worried about you missed the train, don't worry. There's another train coming around the corner, and today's the day to buy that dip. All right.
let's move on. So first up, uh, there's a couple different things going on with Bitcoin. Uh, there's a supply issue. Uh, there's different things with like, uh, you know, Bitcoin being bought up and then, uh, you know, being transferred. But I don't. I have always suspected that the reason why why Bitcoin is going up is for two reasons. First of all, because of the uh, ridiculous quantitative easing or the money printing that is going on in the United States and you know globally, and so that is one thing. And the second thing is also because of this coronavirus. Uh, I think as as it has spread across the globe and it's it's hit America pretty tough, and that has actually you know uh, tanked the economy. I mean, not the stock market; stock market's going crazy, but the economy uh, takes a big hit, and especially small businesses. So I always said, you know, if you're going to have a problem uh, with this pandemic, uh, you know, elongating, or with something with the economy, like maybe a jobs report uh, that that comes out that is, uh, you know, still bad, then Bitcoin and gold will probably shoot up. But but as things start to reverse, I said, I believe that uh, Bitcoin will uh, actually uh, decrease and so will gold because people, when they get worried, uh, they're looking for a safe haven, they're looking for safety, they're looking for some kind of sanity. So when you have like the economy tanking and this coronavirus, like, what do I do? What's going on? The quantitative easing, we'll get Bitcoin and gold. But then when the economy turns around, they're like, hey, I don't need it that bad. I think everything's gonna be fine, and it's good. And uh, and here we are today. Uh, we just heard reports that uh, Russia has approved a coronavirus vaccine before completing tests. And and what everybody hears is this: vaccine's been approved, or you know, vaccine is coming out of Russia. That's what they hear. They don't hear the the little details that are going on. And I don't really believe this myself. Let me know what you think in the comment section, but uh, I'll believe it when I see it. So that is one of those things. And then, of course, there was a jobs report that just came out a little bit ago, and it talked about how uh, you know, the non-farm employment rose by 1.7 million jobs in July, with private sector payrolls up 1.4 million and public sector payrolls up 301,000. The increase in public sector payrolls is more illusionary than real, stemming from seasonal adjustment issues. So again, nobody cares about this last sentence. All they hear is, hey, Hey, better than uh, expect the jobs report. And that's the problem uh, because uh, we just kind of look at, uh, we're, everybody's looking for the most positive thing. Give me positive. And then when they find it, like, great, I'm gone. Uh, so the same thing's happening with, uh, I think, Bitcoin and gold. And actually, I was on uh, Alex Maschioli's uh, uh, podcast and uh, YouTube show, and they asked me, they said, you know, what do you think is going to happen with Bitcoin? I said, well, if uh, this pandemic continues and the economy sucks, it's going to do, do great. But as soon as we get a vaccine, probably going to tank a little bit. And uh, yeah, here we are. So again, I'm not Nostradamus. That was just a, a hunch. And uh, maybe it's right. I don't know. So uh, we will see what happens. And Alex, I'm still waiting for that uh, episode to air, but uh, just saying. All right, let's jump into uh, our next article. So Paytm freezes Indian bank accounts suspected of crypto trading. Good Lord, I got to tell you, I saw this and I was like, well, that's kind of scary. And when I read it, I'm like, that's frightening. So what's going on? India's largest mobile commerce platform, Paytm, that's a pretty cool name, I got to tell you, Paytm, has reportedly been freezing the bank accounts of users suspected of crypto trading even through cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin, is legal in India. So Paytm Payments Bank, which described itself as India's largest digital bank with over, check this out, 58 million account holders. Wow. Has reportedly been blocking customers' accounts suspected of trading cryptocurrencies. Paytm is India's largest mobile commerce platform with about 450 million registered users. That's a lot of users. So scrolling down, Paytm would not be the only bank to have a problem with cryptocurrency trading. Last month, Axis Bank, India's third largest private sector bank, reportedly called customers, let me, let me get this straight. They called customers personally, and they ask them whether they use the accounts for cryptocurrency trading. Can you imagine if your bank, let's say USAA, Wells Fargo, Chase, they called you up and they go, hey, Barry, uh, just a little quick question. Are you using your money that is your money that we have no control of? And oh, by the way, thanks for putting it in our bank so we can lend more of that out for fractional reserve banking. Really appreciate that. But anyhow, the question is, Barry, are you buying cryptocurrency? Oh, you are. Well, we're going to shut you down. Can you imagine that happening? I mean, to me, that is a brave new world, and it's the scariest thing I've heard of in a long time. Anyhow, getting back to the article, the bank also warned that it will block accounts used for this purpose. Some customers said they were also asked to sign a declaration form 
confirming that they do not deal in any type of virtual currency transactions. Let me read that again. They had to sign a paperwork that said they're not dealing in any kind of virtual currency transactions through though their accounts through their accounts at the bank. Unbelievable. So before the Supreme Court quashed the central bank's circular in March, banks were closing accounts suspected of being used for crypto trading. Just as a refresher, the Supreme Court of India, uh, they struck down a, a law which made cryptocurrency uh, illegal, essentially. And they said that it, uh, you know, people are free to choose what they want to do. And the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, was pretty ticked off because, uh, you know, that directly went against what they were saying. Uh, but now all of a sudden, the, the RBI is saying, hey, crypto trading is not illegal. Uh, banks are not restricted. However, banks can act in their own interest, so users are advised to take caution. What a bunch of nonsense right there. So so the Reserve Bank is like, hey, it's not illegal, and you think they're not telling their banks, hey, you better get a hold in this, you better get in line, you better grab some bench and sit down because we are not gonna allow this to happen. So step up, get in line, kiss the ring, and do what we say. Just an opinion, I could be wrong. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section and uh, let's move on to our next article. Next up, Grayscale XRP is poised to benefit from the $2 trillion global payments market. And right now I can tell you, all of the XRP army is really excited about this and everybody else is groaning. But uh, just stick with me. This is pretty interesting. So uh, now uh, they're talking about Grayscale. The already popular big buyer is shifting its gaze to another crypto called XRP. And of course, they were heavy into Bitcoin. They were buying Bitcoin up like crazy. See, I remember an article which talked about that uh, Grayscale was buying all of the Bitcoin that was being mined, plus everything else they get their hands on for like the last three to six months. It's crazy. Anyhow, in a recent Twitter post, Grayscale seems to be throwing its weight behind the number three top crypto. So let's take a look at that tweet. So this is what they say. Hey, why might XRP have the potential to capture significant value from the uh, more than two trillion global payments market? Download our building blogs report and XRP uh, to learn more. So I'm like, hmm, it's interesting. So I clicked on that, sent me to this page, and they just pretty much give you like a brief overview on this, what's going on. So they, they've, they're putting some time into it. And they're talking about XRP a little bit more so. And then you can download the report. And I will link this in the description if you want to download it yourself. You have to leave your user, your uh, email and information so they can get a hold of you probably. But uh, this is what the report looks like. And I went through it very briefly, but it's got a lot of detailed information about what everything is. So um, it's good to see that uh, Grayscale is uh, pushing a uh, product that uh, I have invested in. <laughs> Look, you gotta understand, uh, I'm biased uh, because I mean, I have Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Chainlink, Cardano, Tezos, EOS, uh, VeChain. So when I talk about these things, it's because I'm biased. Uh, I try not to be, uh, but it does seep in every so often. And this is one of those examples. So uh, again, I'm very happy for this, but let's see what happens because on the positive, that's great, Grayscale is doing that. But as a lot of people know, uh, it doesn't matter how many positive things come out about Ripple, uh, the company, and then XRP, their cryptocurrency, uh, it seems to not make a difference. And uh, right now it is, uh, gosh, what is it trading at? 27, almost 28 cents. Uh, so I got to tell you, XRP has been around that for a long time. I'm beginning to think it's a stable coin, honestly, because it's like it never moves. And uh, that's just my two cents. But uh, yeah, go ahead and check out that uh, uh, this uh, report. Very detailed. Uh, looks like just, uh, you know, different things about XRP and how great it is and, and how it could potentially take over for remittance payments, which I believe it's either that one or Stellar. One of them is going to win. And uh, we'll see. So here's my final thoughts on this. Uh, Grayscale is a pretty smart uh, company. Uh, they've got uh, Barry Silbert. I always say his name wrong. I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong. But um, he's, I mean, he's a smart guy. He surrounds himself with smart people. And they do. They are what is called smart money. I mean, except for its choices in, in commercials. And if you know what I'm talking about, see yesterday's video where I reviewed their recent commercial. Just awful. Um, but I got to I gotta tell you, if if they're pushing it, right now because the question is why now why are you doing this now what's going on i mean you had bitcoin right there and, and that's going to go up massively so why are you pushing xrp so i think that they know something they know something because they uh run around in circles that you and i will never be privy to and i'm thinking to myself what do they know that we don't know 
and maybe it's something big or maybe it's just something just a hunch let me know what you think in the comments section and let's move on to question of the day so question of the day comes to me from oa or actually andrew and he had been emailing me for a couple of days uh, about the voyager app so let's just break into that right now and jump into the office all right welcome back to the office so uh today the question of the day comes to us from oa or andrew and uh andrew's got a pretty good question he says uh, hey rob uh here's an update regarding being able to withdraw my Tezos. And actually, Andrew had emailed me a couple days ago and said he's having issues with taking different cryptocurrencies, digital assets, off of the uh, Voyager platform into his Nano Ledger because that's what he wants to do to keep everything safe, which, you know, I can totally understand. So uh, he's been going back and forth with Voyager. And he said, uh, so, you know, they pretty much figured it out. They told me that, uh, you know, you can't take all these different assets off, only certain ones. And he states there should be some type of info in the app next to our holding that lets us know that it can't be withdrawn. So on uh, the Voyager app, well, well, first of all, if you look in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link. It's going to look like this. And what this link has is a link to all of my different uh, exchanges and wallets that I have uh, am using or have ever used in the past. And these are the ones that I recommend. And it goes over everything as far as like what what the fees are, if there's any insurance, uh, that the trustworthiness, what I think about them. And I can just tell you right now that there's some on there that I just totally do not recommend because I just didn't like them. So uh, Voyager is one of my top two picks. It's uh, between Voyager to buy everything and Celsius uh, for the interest rates. So uh, the thing with Voyager, and this is, uh, this is currently a problem, is that um, out of all the different digital assets that you have, you can only take off certain ones. And right now, those certain ones are uh, the basic attention token, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Comp, DAI, uh, Dash, Engine, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum, KNC, Chainlink, Chainlink, uh, Litecoin, Maker, OMG, OXT, uh, Tether, USDC, USDT, Voyager, and Zero uh, X. So those are the ones currently that you can actually take off right now. The other ones, um, they offer them. You can buy them like uh, Cardano, uh, VeChain, those type of things, uh, but you cannot take them off the app. So uh, the question that I had was, um, you know, how, well, first of all, uh, why is that? I don't understand. And, and the second of, second of all that Andrew came up to me and he asked me in the email was, hey, what's the whole thing with uh, waiting five days? That seems like a ridiculous amount of time as opposed to like a place like Coinbase. So um, these are questions that I had too. So what I did was I reached out to people uh, at Voyager that I knew and I go, hey, what's going on with this? I don't understand. I got people who are having to give me questions and I'm recommending this. So, you know, what's going on? And they, they, they gave me an answer and they said, uh, it was a simple, simplified answer. And they go, hey, you know who could answer this perfectly would be our, our CEO, uh, Stephen uh, Ehrlich. And I said, great, uh, here's what I do. Uh, instead of him emailing me, I do a queue of the day. It only takes like five minutes. Get him on a Zoom meeting with me. And I said, sure. So uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be asking Stephen uh, two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, why does it take five days uh, for you know the digital assets that we purchase with our money uh, to be taken off of the platform? And the second thing is, uh, all the, out of all the different cryptocurrency digital assets that we have right now that are available to us to buy, uh, why is it like certain ones like Cardano and VeChain? we can't take off yet. So uh, those are my two uh, big questions that I have for him. So uh, we'll see what he says. Um, you know, this guy from, from what, I've, what I've read and what I've seen, a uh, pretty upstanding guy. He was the uh, uh, CEO of E-Trade before he became the CEO of uh, Voyager. So he's been around the block. He knows a lot of smart people. And, uh, you know, he seems to care about the community. So, you know, we'll ask him the questions. And uh, the big thing here is that you have to remember something, is that... Uh, you know, all these people that are out there that have these exchanges and these wallets and everything else, um, we don't work for them. They work for us. So when, you know, we have these questions or we have something that uh, we want to get answered or we need things, uh, when we reach out to them, you know, we should be able to, you know, get some kind of response. So if you're, if you're on an exchange right now or a wallet and you're sending out your, your uh, requests and they're not getting back to you, go to where you're appreciated. And uh, that's all I'll say. And uh, if you want to take a look at, you know, where I've been appreciated or the ones that I actually like and currently use and trust, uh, go ahead and uh, click on that link in the description of the video. And you can see all the different exchanges that I've used and different wallets. So 
uh, that's it. So tomorrow we'll ask Steven and hopefully um, Andrew that you know gets part of your question answered. All right, let's, let's jump back. All right, so that's it for today. So thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Uh, remember, um, we're going to have ups and downs and it's okay. Just the first rule is don't FOMO. Just follow your plan and you're going to be fine. Um, but I will say this, I do like to do random shout outs for everybody who has joined uh, for Digital Asset News. Uh, if you don't know, underneath there's a join button. Uh, you don't get anything special. It's just uh, like a tip. It's like a buck ninety nine. And then uh, these people join up and I give out, uh, you know, random shout outs. So who we got? Lance Benzer, Bill Austin, Justin Ross. All right. This was, I like this one. Fooled ya. Fooled ya. Dreamer. I'm going to, I'm going to try this one. <sighs> Hervohe Soic. I think I nailed it. All right, Soft, Joseph F, uh, Bill Jerky, Sam Rossman, Chris DVM, Jesse B, and Stevie A. Nice. Uh, and that's it for today. So again, thanks for sticking with me. I, I really appreciate it. If uh, you like these videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up in your left and right. I don't know, because uh, YouTube has uh, control over that. I don't do anything with that. Uh, just like the ads you may or may not have seen in the beginning, middle, and potentially end of this video, if they're a scam uh, advertisement, I have no control over that. That's all YouTube, go complain to them. Uh, but that is it for today. So I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.